next speaker is James, Jim Duncan. Um, he is the data and web coordinator for the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative. Jim received his bachelor's degree from Haverford College in Pennsylvania and his MS degree from Oregon State University, where he studied the ge geography of human and environment interactions and social ecological res resilience, focusing his thesis re research on how home buildings and forest lands might affect landscape ecology and ten tenure regimes, regimes. Jim later worked as a consultant at the World Bank Institute in Washington, D.C., before accepting this position with BMC and moving back to Vermont. Jim. Great. Thank you, Allie. So I'm going to talk about a study that I kind of walked into as part of BMC's uh, work, which is about using iTree for urban forestry analysis and looking at the urban canopy of Burlington. Um, so this is a project that has been from BMC and also a service learning component with the university. So we have students from the Natural Resources 1 NR1 class, which is the intro field, excuse me, field ecology class. Uh, working on this project every year, the idea is how do we monitor Burlington's urban forests over time and actually develop a picture of whether they're doing better or worse, uh, where we can make improvements. So I'm not going to go into the methods too much. iTree is a pretty complicated suite of products. One of them is called iTree Eco, which is what we use. That's maybe the most intensive survey method. Um, so there's a range of iTree products. This is specifically Eco. What it does is it takes detailed plot-based surveys um, to assess the overall state of the urban forest. You can build a statistical representation of what the trees and species are doing in the, in the city. Um, we used 200 random points across the city as a sampling frame. Um, these fell wherever they fell, so it could be in the middle of the Winooski River, it could be on somebody's backyard, it could be in an industrial parking lot. But all of that was important, so we would have students going out saying, we don't have any trees. Like, yes, you don't, but you might. And that's where we're going to get to the change. <coughs> Excuse me, to the change part of how are these forests changing. Um, and what's different about iTree Eco is that you do a lot to measure the tree condition and physiology. So it's not just looking at the street trees and what's going on with them and all trees, it's also looking at not just the canopy and whether there's a forest there or not, but also uh, what the um, height of the tree is, the diameter, the condition of the crown. So you can get all these interesting metrics which then allow you to get to things like uptake of carbon or rainfall interception. Um, so it has this more uh, functional component. Fast forward here a little bit, doesn't it? So uh, we're using UVM students. These are very willing volunteers. They got through about a quarter of their plot the last time they had, because um, they had a lot of trees. It's a very intensive method, but these students also were able to get out and learn skills. Um, and they also could see their data in the context of the monitoring picture. Since now we've done this for three years, we have a kind of a historical record of data. Um, so we have had them go to 159 plot surveys so far, over 1,000 trees measured de in a detailed way. And we have now some estimates of what the urban forest of Burlington looks like. Uh, we get about 68 trees per acre um, and over 180,000 trees estimated in Burlington. And these numbers might actually be kind of low because we have had trouble getting to some of the more remote plots that we still need to survey. Uh, we have maybe around 30% canopy cover, but um, this is an interesting uh, outcome of this work is that we get some estimate of the forest health in the city. Uh, we can see for better or worse, where is it? Buckthorn is doing pretty well. Actually, no, Buckthorn is doing um, pretty badly, so that's great, because Buckthorn is an invasive species. Um, we also see that uh, Norway maple, for better or worse, is doing really well, also an invasive species, but we also get a picture of some of our more important species, like uh, Eastern White Pine, Red Oak, and Sugar Maple. And we can see that they are doing generally well, but there's some variation, so this is something that we should think about when we think about forest management, how to advise landowners in the city what we should do for those species. Similarly, looking at land use and tree density, this gives us an idea of where we can target. Um, parklands obviously have a lot of trees and uh, maybe are a great place to not cut them down, uh, but probably the most room for growth in the city because it's largely residential. It's gonna be in this area here, in multiple family residential, and then the residential areas because the land area is so great. We can only do so much as a city in terms of utilities, transportation corridors. Um, we, can't, we can only plant so many trees in those places. So these are, this gives you a sense of where trees are falling. We're finding our trees now in the density of place. <laughs> the nice thing about ECO is that once you have the survey data, then you can chunk it through their analysis servers to get estimates of ecosystem services. And they are actually able to supply dollar values to based on national averages. And they have their documentation written down. Essentially, you can get out a custom report for your city of how much um, air pollution is being mitigated by trees in Burlington. So this is an estimated of estimate of deferred health effects. So you don't have to go to the hospital for asthma or for um, asthma. So you 
can take out some of these particulates through trees, you actually get some health benefits back to the citizens. Similarly, carbon sequestration is an important role that trees play, and we see that sugar maples may be taking up almost a fifth of the carbon that Burlington trees absorb. So when we think about sugar maples leaving the area, maybe that's something we would want to be replacing. Similarly, red oak stores the most, holding 16% of the carbon in the city, based on the current estimates. So what's next? Uh, we have done these plots in the southern half of Burlington. We have a similar number in the northern half. We've now managed to get the students back to these plots for the first time. So the first step was to establish the baseline. The next step is now let's monitor. Let's go back every four years and see how these plots have done. So this lab year, we were trying a new approach, and we got pretty far. Um, we still have a lot to do, but we're able to actually get these students back to these plots, and they're able to do these measurements again, and then we can start looking for new places. We also need to fill in some gaps. Uh, where you see red is where there's, um, there's, there are plots there, and we haven't gotten to them yet. These are really hard to get to. But some we should be filling in, like down here and on the uh, tip here. So there's some places where we need to go back and finish our plot work. And we also need to get um, a better ability to use it as a monitoring tool, because right now it's really set to do a single survey. Doing the interview comparison is a little bit difficult. We're going to work with the iTree folks to use some of their change analysis to kind of get at that question of how is the forest changing, not just what is there now. And we also need to improve our customization for students so that they are more able to get out in the field, start doing these measurements right away. Um, looking ahead, I think uh, there's a lot of, if people are here are familiar with FIA, there's going to be some integration between iTree and FIA and the ability to use those uh, tools together. So um, the question is, what can we do with this? We have the survey method. Essentially, ECO is a, a methodology for looking at trees that gives you the information you need to determine things like carbon, rainfall infiltration, or interception, that kind of thing. So we're looking at maybe doing a forest gradient. Um, so Mike Snyder mentioned something about that this morning. What is the continuum along our forest uh, communities look like, or along development pressures, or um, elevation is kind of a proxy for that. What else could we look at in terms of gradients? So this is something we're actually looking for feedback on now, so if anyone has suggestions, we would love to hear it. But we're looking at our BMC intensive site up here in Mount Mansfield, where we have a lot of ongoing research we've already done Burlington, and maybe there's something in between that we can start to look at. And this is an area of wildly varying development pressure, so there might be something interesting there. The other piece is whether we can do some statewide integration with FIA, um, and can we use this for a larger statewide effort of forest monitoring. These uh, dots here are the um, forest health monitoring plots for uh, FIA, so this is where people, where they're going out and taking detailed metrics on the crown of the trees, so not just what species and how big, but how's the crown doing. They only resurvey these every, they do a five year rotating survey, but they only get back to the same plot every, some uh, larger number of years, I think it's 20 or 10. So this gives you a good little grid of Vermont, but there's obviously a lot that we're missing. So can we use iTree and um, EMC's capacities to fill in some of these gaps and look at uh, doing some more intensive forest health monitoring around the state um, using those kind of sophisticated plot-based tools? And that's what I've got. Thank you.
method for evaluating the health of those trees? How do you do that? So it's very similar to FIA um, in that, but basically uh, you start with what species is it, what's the diameter and crest height, then you look at how tall it is, and then you look at the height of the canopy. And then once you have this canopy, you basically develop a model of how the canopy is shaped, and then you look for percent missing, um, which could be they trimmed it for utility pole, then you also look for percent dieback, which is just defoliation or, or withdrawing the nutrients. So the dieback and missing are slightly different, um, and those are the two major metrics. And then you also look at um, exposure, uh, the crown line exposure. So if it's totally shaded and it's not shaped how species, that would give you some kind of stress.